Hello and welcome to this new tutorial series from Assimilate Inc. on Learning Scratch. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe and this course is designed with one thing in mind, to teach you everything you could ever need to know about working in Scratch. So when you're done watching all the lessons we'll be producing, you'll have the confidence to jump head first into your first project. In this course, we're going to cover everything from project setup to conforming, trays, grading, metadata, a lot of metadata, dailies, workflows, exporting, and so much more. If you're watching us on YouTube, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date for when new lessons are posted each week. And if you have a question you want answered, you can always send it to the Scratch team at support at assimilateinc.com or directly to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Our first lesson is on project creation, so let's get right into Scratch and get started. All right, so let's launch Scratch. Now keep in mind that I am working on a Mac. The concepts that I show you are going to work exactly the same whether you are on a Mac or on Windows. Now because I don't have any projects in my project selection window, Scratch will prompt me to create a new project once I launch and we're just going to cancel out of the create new project window for just a second because there is some housekeeping things that I want to talk about before we get rolling. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that I did mention the support team's email address, support at assimilateinc.com. If you do need to send them an email about specific support related questions, they will need some information from you that's always handy to put into your initial email so you have as little back and forth as possible. What I encourage you to do is to click on the Assimilate Scratch splash screen. By doing that, you're going to bring up the system information for the system you're currently working on. Not only information about the system itself, but also what version of Scratch that you are running on. It's always handy to give this information or as much of it as you think is relevant to the team so they can help you troubleshoot any issues you might run into. Now, one other thing that I absolutely love about Scratch is that in most cases what you want to do when you're contacting support is send log files for whatever the issue was that happened to be happening. Now in many cases trying to find the log files for an application can be tricky, not so in Scratch. All you need to do is simply navigate down to the button that says log files and click on it. You'll be brought right to the window to the folder containing those log files. Simply grab the ones you need, attach them to an email, and fire them off to the support team. So let's talk about project creation. Now what I'm going to do is just hide out of Scratch just for one second. I'm going to come to my external media drive because I do have a folder on this drive called appropriately enough Scratch Projects which currently is empty. I deleted all the projects I had in there before we started working on our first lesson. Now the reason that I'm pointing this out to you is because I would like to actually send the projects to that folder on my external drive. Now by default, Scratch will not do that. Now what's important to keep in mind about how we're going to deal with things like our system settings, our user settings, etc, etc, is that I'm not going to talk about them right off the bat. We're going to get a little bit more in-depth into Scratch because there are some advanced settings that go along with advanced concepts that I want to wait till we get to those before we specifically jump in and talk about specific user and system settings. So because I want to show you one that's directly related to project settings, let's get into that right now. I'm going to come down to my system settings and inside my system settings, I want to draw your attention right here to the system paths. You'll see this is where we can get in and assign the users, the projects and the settings. Now, more specifically for what we want to get in and set, we would like to set where our projects are going to go. Now you'll notice that by default with the users and the settings, they're going to library and application support. Because I've already created projects on my system, you'll notice that I've already assigned the default location for those projects to go to, to be my external media drive into that folder called Scratch Projects. Now obviously based on how you want to work, depending on what type of hardware, external hardware, hard drives, etc, etc, you have attached to your system, you're going to want to send your projects to the appropriate location. Now for the users and the settings, I will leave them going to where they are going to right now. All right, that's all I want to talk about for right now inside of our system settings. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to say OK, and let's create a new project. To do that, I'm simply going to navigate over to new 
and you'll see that we're now greeted once again by the create new project window. So let's create our first project. So I'm just gonna call this project appropriately enough, learn scratch. And I'm going to say create. Now keep in mind that once I say create, it's not gonna close the new project window. It's just going to open up all of the other options for us to get in and set them. Let's talk about our project paths. And most importantly, I wanna talk about the media path. Now, what exactly does the media path mean? Well, many people think that much like working in applications like Premiere or Final Cut, you can take any clip from anywhere in any location, any drive, bring it into the application and start working with it right away. And yes, you absolutely can do that inside of Scratch. Is it the most ideal workflow? Probably not. Normally what a good workflow would be is to gather up all the media that you're going to be using and have it contained in one folder on, let's just use for example, an external hard drive. So we're gonna have all of that media for this project called Learn Scratch in one folder. What we're then gonna do is we're gonna assign that folder as the media folder. What this lets Scratch do is that if things are moved around inside of that media folder, Scratch will easily be able to link to it again. It is a relative link. If you're gonna start bringing in clips from outside that media folder, you'll be creating absolute links. If that clip gets moved somewhere else, Scratch will not know where it went to and you will have to get in and locate it manually for it to be relinked to inside of Scratch. So for example, if I hide out of Scratch, we come to my media drive here, I happen to have inside of my footage folder here, let's just make sure we sort by the date here. Actually, we'll sort by our name here just so we can find what I'm looking for a lot faster. We have a folder called, appropriately enough, dailies. Inside that folder, you'll see we have some red footage, some cards, some audio. And what I wanna do is to assign this as my media drive. What we're going to do is come back into Scratch. I'm going to come down to my media project path. I'm going to say set. We're going to set this by coming to our volumes, media one, into dailies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this as a new bookmark. Let's add it as a bookmark. We'll call it dailies. That's fine. We'll just say close. It will now appear over here. So we can find that folder super quick, super easy. And with daily selected, we're going to come down and simply say select. Now you'll notice that what Scratch has done by default is it's now assigned a render and a cache folder into the same location. Render for exporting renders from Scratch. Now keep in mind that when I say that these are now set, this doesn't mean that we can't get in and reassign where these things are going to go to after the fact. Now I'm talking specifically about rendering as the example here. Once we set where we're gonna be rendering our exports to, we do have the ability to change that at any time, much like we have the ability to get in and change the format that we're gonna be working with at any time. All this is is a starting point for us to start with to get our project on the go. All right, so let's move on. Let's talk about creating the actual format for our project. Now, one thing that I wanna show you in here, and this is gonna be your first introduction to this concept, which is a little bit different than probably what you've seen in other applications. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna drop this down and I'm gonna choose a custom project size. Now, how you might be accustomed to doing this is one of two ways. If I wanna get in and assign this to be a specific value, let's just say 3000. What you would normally assume that you're gonna do is click and start dragging. Now you'll notice that as I do that, it doesn't quite do what I want it to do because as I drag, it's kind of jumping all over the place. Now we do of course have the ability to come in, simply click on the value and punch in 1920, say enter, and the value is now set. However, what if I wanted to get in and adjust that value incrementally? You'll notice that as I was clicking and dragging, it didn't really work. Well, what we have the ability to do inside of Scratch is what I like to call twirl. Okay, so instead of clicking and dragging, which to be honest, if you're trying to set this, you're gonna be going off the screen and you're gonna to have to stop and keep going and it's just, it's a colossal pain. What you have the ability to do is to click and twirl. Now you'll notice that as I twirl, the value is gonna change. Now, in this case, using the actual width as an example is probably not the greatest of ideas. Let's just punch in 1920. And I'm gonna come down to the scale and we're just gonna start adjusting this. You'll notice that as I twirl, you'll see that value go up very slightly. And as I start to twirl faster, it's gonna go faster. And the same works in reverse going the other way. This is how you can get in and be super precise 
as to getting in and adjusting parameters inside of Scratch and really any value that you can get in and enter an absolute value for, you're going to be able to get in and again, like I said, twirl the value to be as specific as you want it to be. Now, I'm going to drop this down because you see we have an absolute ton of presets in here for us to choose from. For the purposes of getting us rolling in the right direction, I'm going to choose HD 1080p 23976. By default, Scratch will come in. It will set the project up with the proper frame rate, proper aspect ratio, and the proper raster dimension. And by default, we want to set our output to be JPEG. RGB will set this to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And last but certainly not least, we have this thing that's called Apply Default Output Templates. Now, chances are, if you're working in Scratch, you're going to have a few, I'm going to call them guaranteed workflows. You might have a very specific dailies workflow. You might have a very specific finishing workflow. And chances are you'll be doing one of those more than the other. So let's just say, hypothetically, you're going to be doing a lot of dailies work for you know, a post-production house. And you know that you're going to always be creating the same type of dailies for them. Well, what's always great to have is the ability to have Scratch do things for you. For example, to always set up an export tree with the correct output module. This is where you can get in and have Scratch. In our case, I'm just going to set it to be Kevin's Avid Dailies Workflow. Now, again, don't worry if you don't even understand what that means. We'll be talking all about that in a future lesson. But what this gives us the ability to do is to assign a specific output tree so that when we go to the render module, it's automatically populated and ready to export. All right. Now, you'll see that we have the option for clip metadata here, which to be honest, I'm not even going to talk about in this lesson because we're going to dedicate a whole bunch of lessons to metadata. I always refer to Scratch as a metadata machine, and you're going to see that very quickly. Because Scratch focuses a lot of its work on dailies workflow, information is important. And as much information as possible is the goal when sending dailies from Scratch to wherever they need to go to. Media Composer, Premiere, Final Cut, doesn't really matter. So again, like I said, we're going to dedicate a few lessons specifically to clip metadata, and we'll circle back and we'll talk about clip metadata in the project settings window when we do that. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to navigate down and I'm going to say OK. You'll now see that our Learn Scratch project has appeared inside of the project window. I'm going to select it and I'm going to say Enter Project. Now this might look very daunting here because we now have this window that has a whole bunch of columns in it. We're not really sure what they do. What I do want to show you is the fact that if I was to jump down to the render module, you will see that because I assigned my dailies workflow inside of our project setting, it's automatically applied here. And even if I didn't know what I was doing inside of Scratch and somebody said, hey, can you just go into that project and just export you know, Kevin's dailies workflow? Boom, there it is, all set to go. And what we also have the ability to do from this window is to get in and to change the format of our output settings right here, much like we did inside of the project settings window. All right, now I'm not going to get too much in depth because in our next lesson, I want to talk about what each one of the main modules does. Construct, edit, color effects, render, and how you're going to get in and start working with the construct window as your first stop. All right, that brings us to the end of our lesson. Now, I want to remind you, we were working in Scratch 9.1, and if you need more information about this release, you can check out the link you see on the screen right now, and don't worry, we've included it in the notes below this tutorial, so you can get there lightning fast. And don't forget, for everything Scratch and Assimilate related, you can check us out on the web at www.assimilateinc.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.